Hi and welcome to another Learning Byte on the Juno's Pulse Secure Access Service. My name is Scott Newman and today we're going to be looking at configuring an Active Directory slash Windows NT authentication server. Um, nowadays we're pretty much all using Active Directory, um, I would hope, but um, it's just the authentication method. It's what it's labeled, it's what it's named. So we're going to take a look at how to actually set up the new authentication server. And you may be thinking, well I've done that, been doing this for years, I've, I've seen it done many times if you've been around this stuff for a while uh, you may be wondering why we're doing the learning byte on this well they've actually changed the way that you configure the authentication server and a lot of people have had questions about it how does it work um, you know how come it's not working for me that sort of thing so we're gonna actually take a look at that just really quick today during this learning byte as I mentioned before um, they've actually changed the way this is set up and it's the same on both the Junos Pulse Secure Access Service and the Junos Pulse Access Control Service now when you go to create this the Active Directory server you're gonna see a configuration option that's a little bit different than what they had previously. The default display is going to be the standard configuration. And the reason it's the default method is because it's the recommended configuration mode at this time. So when you log in, this will these will be the options that you'll pre be presented with. And we'll show you this in just a minute. It is required if you're using Windows Server 2008 R2. And the reason for that is uh, they're using uh, MS Chat V2, so it's going to just it's going to work better than if you were to use the legacy mode. Um, now the legacy mode still is available. If you go and click on the legacy mode button, you'll see the configuration options like what you used to see in the olden days. So it's still there. It's still supported, maybe as a backup method or as a fallback method, um, should the normal method not work for you. Obviously, if you're still using Windows Server 2003 or or even earlier than that. Um, then this is going to be the option that you'll want to choose. But for most people, I'm guessing we'll be using the uh, standard mode. Now, now let me uh, darken this here. Let's go ahead and take a look at a uh, configuration setup that I've already configured. So I've already gone through and set up everything. The only thing I haven't done yet is update the join status. So let's take a look just really quick at some of the options. You'll see that we have the name so the name is just arbitrary it's just whatever you want to call it the domain so this is going to be like the the short name or the net bios name that you're going to apply so in this environment it's just a lab environment we call it pulse or pulse.local is the domain name so we're just calling it pulse here the kerberos realm um, that's going to be typically your dns name so in this case we put in uh, pulse.local now the credentials that are required um, this has to be some type of level of credential that has permission to join the domain as a device we've set this up and you can read more about this in the admin guide I don't want to get into great detail here um, but it, it is a, essentially an administrative level uh, credential that we have to put in here so we put in a, an account and the password for that account now if I don't save the credentials what that's going to do is when I hit save changes the password field will be cleared out so that if somebody comes in later and wants to try and make changes to this they're gonna to have to make sure they type in the the password there so it's just an extra security feature for the configuration method the container name this is just where we're gonna place ourselves. when I say ourself I mean the SSL VPN it's gonna be placed as a computer in the computers container so we're, we're joining the domain here and this is the default name that it will be given so again if you want to change it to something else you can go ahead and do that sometimes people get a little bit freaked out when they see this say you have an AD administrator who's keeping close eyes on you know what's getting joined you know they see this name they have a tendency to wonder you know what's that and they start deleting it and of course that causes problems for everybody so if you're not on the same page with your Active Directory administrator first of all get on the same page but then second of all you know put in a, a computer name that you know that makes sense for everybody to uh, so that we don't go about deleting the account so I've saved my changes so that's pretty much all I did here in this configuration everything else at this point I left at the default parameters so we're using Kerberos um, we can enable NTLM 
trusts, all that stuff. Now, if I switch to the Active Directory legacy mode, that's how I'm going to see, in essence, the, the old configuration options. So here I could put in the IP address, the backup. So this, this looks exactly like it used to look in, in the old setup. But that's not what we want. We're going to use the standard setting. So um, we're going to go switch back to uh, the mode. Okay, you'll notice here in the domain join status, right now it has a little red light. So the question is, why is it red? It says the domain join failed. So that's all we know at this point. We don't know why it failed. We don't know what could be the problem. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to, to figure it out. Now with Active Directory, we actually have some pretty good logging messages that come up when you try to join the domain. So the first thing we need to do when we're troubleshooting this is look at the logs. Now specifically we want to look at the event logs. And you'll notice here we have a, a major error followed by a critical error. The major error says Active Directory Authentication Server Pulse AD Samba error message uh, Kinit failed. Clock skew too great. Now this was a problem that I had when I was first testing this new authentication method. Active Directory will throw a fit if the time is not synchronized between the SA and the AD server. And I believe that's what's going on here. Now I, I know it is because I, did, I set it up on purpose so that we could demonstrate this. Um, some of our uh, instructors and, and other folks that we've had use this have all run into the same problem. So from my money, this is the most common reason for failure that I've seen thus far. Other reasons might be the Active Directory account that you're using isn't enabled, or the password isn't set up right, or that just doesn't have the right permissions. But this is the main issue that I've seen so far. It's happened over and over again, because a lot of times, especially in a lab environment, we just don't even pay attention to the clock setting. Um, so in this case, we do want to make sure the clock setting is correct. So of course, that's where I would normally say, go ahead and use NTP. For the sake of simplicity at this point, um, we're just going to get the right time here, which I know is correct on this browser here uh, at the time that I recorded this. Um, but obviously you could also set up NTP. We're using Windows Server 2012. Uh, 2012 can act as an NTP server, so that works really well. You can obviously, more recommended, use the uh, something out there on the internet so that way you make sure you have uh, a good accurate clock on on all of your devices uh, but at this point we're just going to use um, just the get from browser option here we're going to hit say you know, we'll make sure that's right we'll hit save changes okay so now we've got the right clock on our device but now we need to go back and remember I'm going to off service and I click on pulse 80 that's the name of my Active Directory server here. Okay, now the light is still red here. This is something that doesn't refresh automatically. Um, I could click Update Join Status and it would still be red because it's still based on the pre existing join that we tried to do before. So, what we need to do now is we need to do a reset join. So, we're going to click on the reset join option. And again, it'll have a little uh, domain join in progress. This light does not uh, refresh automatically like some of the other options. You may see this light in other places and be used to it automatically refreshing like in the clustering options. Um, it just doesn't do that here. I, I, if I were to guess it would be because you obviously don't want to be mid configuration in this and have um, some of these fields clear out while it's refreshing or something. I, you know, That's guess though. So now I'm going to click um, update join status and you can see we are join successfully. So now everything should work just fine. If we had a little bit more time I would actually set up launch Juno's Pulse and I would uh, do a little test account for you but um, I think we can see at least from this standpoint that the service is successfully joined so most likely our users should be able to authenticate and if we go in and look you can see we've got this set up in the AD realm here and I've got role mapping based on groups. So these are group memberships here that we've set up uh, within AD. Uh, so if you're wondering, well, what else can I do it by? If we're using AD, we can do rules based on username, certificates, or group membership, 
or custom expressions. Um, if you're looking for uh, something like LDAP attributes, you would have to do a, an LDAP directory server. So that's it for today. Um, thanks so much for uh, taking a few minutes to watch this. If you want to know more about this, I go through a lot of the different authentication server options in our Juno's Pulse Secure Access course. It's based on the 8.0 code, which at the time of this recording is the most recent version of code. And we talk about not just this, but we talk about setting up Pulse, resource policies, all the different types of scenarios for mobile devices and for laptops. And we just go through in four days and talk about setting up this service. We also have a course on the Juno's Pulse Access Control service, and it's called Juno's Pulse Access Control, and it's based on the 5.8 code. So thanks so much for taking a listen. I hope to hear from you soon. You can send me an email at any time, S. Newman, that's Scott Newman, so S. Newman at Juniper.net. Thanks again. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.